Well, good day, everyone. Um, and sorry for the uh, interruptions up front, but we'll try to do what we can with this. Um, so basically, uh, my name is Alan Greenwood, and I'm here in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Pavel Pawleski, my co-presenter, is in Poznan, Poland. And we're going to talk about Log ABS today, which uh, stands for a Logistics Agent Base System. And it was uh, developed and distributed by Atris Intralogistics, uh, a Poland company. And it is an application that is built on uh, FlexSim. So the presentation today will be basically in two parts. We'll talk about the context of Log ABS, a little bit more about what it is and where it's used and so forth. And then we'll provide uh, some perspectives from five key stakeholders uh, the production engineers, uh, material handling, equipment providers, uh, students and faculty, application developer, and FlexSim um, itself. So the first thing is, is maybe a short definition of log ABS. Uh, it's a lean-based high-level 3D simulator uh, that's used by production manufacturing engineers to facilitate and enhance the design and management of intralogistic systems. Uh, we'll go into this in a little bit more detail, but the first thing is probably to define what I mean by a high-level 3D simulator. We'll start with a general uh, simulation uh, environment, like FlexSim, for example, which provides a modeling and simulation analysis environment to represent the behavior of any type of operation system where a high-level simulator, uh, which is uh, log ABS, uses the general simulation environment uh, to provide pre-built objects and logic and tools to represent the behavior of a specific type of operation system. And basically what this allows you to do is uh, significantly reduce the, the time and cost uh, to have access to simulation models of um, a fairly specific type of system. And um, so it reduces the modeling time, the data collection and, and preparation time, and also the uh, analysis time. So we'll first take a look um, at, as a, a very simple example, and you'll see a real system there on the left, a fairly simple assembly operation, and then the log ABS representation uh, to the right. And uh, we'll also see uh, some definitions of different activities that that operator is performing. So if we uh, yeah, just go click on the slide itself, Pavel. Okay, good, thanks. So what we're seeing in those uh, two renditions is a series of objects. So they're on the left parts and containers, workstation in the, uh, in the middle, and of course the operator. And then off to the right, we have some more containers and a transporter. And each of those are associated with a particular location. Uh, what happens during a, an operation here is that uh, you have a series of activities that are performed and you saw those kind of flashing by during the animation, for example, the assemble task. And then this just represents, uh, we saw one instance of a cycle, so that operator would then continue that cycle for a number of times uh, in, in terms of that operation. So now if we look at uh, operations are, are really are, are cycles and they're cycles of activities. And so what we've shown here is a, a list, if you will, of the various activities that that operator performed. And then similarly, that was done in log ABS. And uh, so what the simulation model is, is, is built on the level of, um, that, that's very familiar to the production engineer. And it's basically on the same level as you would do a lean analysis, as you, your focus is on activities. So you really go from work uh, in general to operations, and then uh, you look at the activities level, and that's as deep as you really need to go or the user needs to go. So 
if we again dive a little bit deeper into this activity uh, idea, the activity is really the focus uh, and, a, and a key concept within log ABS. And so, as I mentioned before, it's the basis for model building. You don't need to go any deeper than the activity level in order to build the simulation model. And these activities are really defined through a high level language or as, as it's termed log ABS instructions. And these activities then are executed based on the current conditions within the simulation or that basically within the environment. And it becomes the basis for analysis. Uh, here's just a, a sampling of a long, uh, there's a number of instructions that have, that have been built into log ABS. And, uh, and this is again, what you use to build the cycles or uh, the operations. And so one example here that we see is the, um, uh, an, a, a case where you have to check for, um, to see if there's a part to be moved. Uh, so a lot of times you do a simulation and, and uh, it'll say, go load a part. Well, if the part's not available, then what do you do? And this, what allows you to do is to check and if, and if there's no parts available or the quantity that's needed, for example, for the, that's specified for the move, then the, in this case, the operator would go do something else and would not execute the next thing in the cycle and would have alternatives, um, uh, activities to then perform. And so there's a whole series of these, of these, again, that you build up what the operation looks like. So this kind of illustrates a, a key difference between the, the general simulation software and the high level simulator is that everything is pretty much performed at the activity level in the high level simulator. And uh, where if you're dealing with FlexSim or other uh, general simulation software, you, you pretty much work at the state or the event level and focus and a lot. And so what happens is the high level simulator sits on top of FlexSim and uh, allows the user to only interact at the, act, at the activity level. And then uh, through log ABS, the, uh, uh, their desires are then executed at, at the lower level. I guess an analogy kind of would be an application and then an operating system um, underneath that, uh, that would carry out a lot of the other more detailed tasks. The, uh, Another thing, and just to illustrate here uh, what's going on behind the scenes and, and a little bit of the detail that's, that's in there without, again, diving in too deeply, is that uh, Log ABS is built on a database system, has a database foundation, and that manages a lot of the relationships between those objects, uh, the operators or the containers, the parts, and so forth. And all of the interface to that is, uh, is, is, is through tables. And so it's a very kind of natural um, uh, interface for, for most users and it's a common type structure. And so that's a, a, again, a key, key factor here in, um, in, in log ABS. Now the, uh, Again, kind of an overview to, to kind of summarize a little bit, uh, if you can go to the next slide, um, is the basic operations that we look at in log ABS is you have a series of work areas uh, that are or work cells, work departments that uh, have internal material flows as well as external flows. And then there's flows between the, the work area and uh, material stores, either raw material or finished product stores. And there's information flow as well, especially if you're dealing with Kanbans and, and other types of systems. And uh, there's a number of logic uh, uh, that's distributed uh, kind of throughout these like associated with the, with the flows, associated with the, um, the work areas themselves and the objects within the work areas. And again, all of this is, is uh, uh, controlled um, at, a, at a higher level 
uh, through through log ABS. And again, some of the things that are included that that are used are, of course, machines and equipment. Uh, I mentioned containers and the parts that go in those containers. Uh, various types of transport, whether it's just a simple operator, an AGV, it could be a logistics train, uh, the, a Kanban system to, to do the pulls and signals of what to do. Um, the layout of the, the equipment within the actual facility and integrates the production schedules of what needs to be produced at, at what time and what order. Um, and associate a lot of other associated data that's associated with the production system. And then on the output side, it, it provides uh, an extensive set of predefined uh, statistics and charts and graphs, um, especially focused on, on lean. For example, Yamazumi charts and so forth to, to look at uh, value-added, non-value-added, uh, activities and, uh, and and how to balance the uh, uh, the lines. So a variety of things that are uh, provide feedback to the user on on the performance of that particular design. So if we now switch a little bit to some of the perspectives uh, and we we think about the production engineer uh, who is really the primary, uh, user of this and the primary benefit of this tool is um, it's it's very easy. It's very natural for production engineers to uh, to use this because a lot of the terminology is the same. It's built around um, production and lean terminology and methods. Um, it has, as I mentioned before, a table based interface, and so it's it's quite easy to use. It's based on standardized work again, familiar and, and what the production engineer typically works with. Uh, it, it, it is founded on lean principles and, is, and is, those are deployed throughout. And uh, of course the simulation allows you to incorporate directly uh, variability. And one of the things we found that it's a very, it enhances the communication um, greatly among various stakeholders through the through the 3D visualizations that uh, FlexSim and, and Log ABS provide. And we get um, uh, basically faster design decisions and better because it's all based on uh, the underlying data structure. And, and uh, so it's a kind of a data-based decision. And it's, it's much less costly than a start from scratch simulation in, in this type of domain. And the, the user has really minimal simulation skills are required and certainly no programming or anything else. And what, what, what overall this allows the production engineer to do is to, as they design the system, they can simulate the system. They're, they become one in one, uh, uh, basically. And so it, oftentimes you'll hear the term simulation-based design, and this really brings this to reality. Uh, this, this particular tool since they become pretty much inseparable. Uh, again, just to illustrate a little bit about uh, the inputs to this uh, that, that go into the tables are derived from tools and techniques that are common to the production engineer and, and used. And actually these tables provide a good structure and repository for all of that information and, and data in one, in essence, in, in one place. And then that's what really is, becomes the driver of the simulation model, the 3D model uh, that we can see in this representation, uh, a little bit more sophisticated example or, or complex example than the one that was, that we illustrated earlier, just for simplicity. And then the output from this, as I'd mentioned, are, are, uh, are focused on what that production engineer needs to look at in terms of, say, line balancing or uh, analyzing where they can uh, remove some uh, non-value-added ta uh, tasks or activities and, uh, and, and, again, streamline the process, make changes, and then go back and rerun the simulation model and, and evaluate performance. 
Uh, certainly, the another key stakeholder are material handling equipment providers, um, and so what what they do is this really, of course, directly affects uh, the sales process, and uh, it does that in a number of ways. It does that through uh, really offering a high tech solution to the customers, which gives them a competitive uh, the material handling equipment providers now have a competitive advantage because they can provide this type of tool to, to their customers. Uh, it also allows the you know, equipment specifications to become actually integrated into the design process or become a part of it and not something that happens later um, further down the, down the road. And uh, it also allows the provider itself to test and demonstrate the effectiveness of their equipment instead of just kind of trying to do this by uh, other means that are maybe less convincing and less visually appealing um, to, to the customer. And um, similar and, and common throughout is that you get a, uh, a much better communication among all the stakeholders due to the 3D visualization that, that's provided. A, uh, another key stakeholder group is uh, students and faculty. And I know that uh, you know, uh, Pavel has used this extensively uh, in the curriculum at Poznan University of Technology. And, and uh, uh, I know that, that program fairly well since I've uh, had the privilege of teaching there uh, for about three years. And some of the capstone courses, which is, involves projects, um, we, we would do simulation projects in logistics. And what now a transition to something, a tool like Log ABS, um, really helps align the uh, student interest and, and their expertise. And uh, it, it provides a great way because all the inputs are things that are talked about in, you know, whether it's a plan for every part or uh, bill of materials. And a lot of the things that are discussed in the courses now become a part of um, uh, the need, uh, part of this project. And it demonstrates how these, uh, the importance and relevance of these tools. And uh, this can be done without a large amount of simulation skill. So it allows them to focus more on logistics and design than it does on, on learning uh, the details of a simulation software. However, it does still provide uh, and illustrates the, very, the power of simulation. And so they get to see the value of, of actually simulating something. And, um, and of course also, Typically in, in the, the curriculum is a lot talked about lane principles so they get a chance to actually apply some of those and see how it's used. As I mentioned, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's easy to use on their part as well as of course the production engineer because they're again using a common similar language. Uh, the methods are similar to them and, and common. And the, again, the table base interface doesn't require any programming and, and allows it to be very easy for them to, to use. And then these can be uh, extended beyond maybe the student project that's part of a capstone course. They can be standard, extended into maybe a real business project. And so they lend themselves quite well to that. Uh, and, and this would be, this is a typical steps that the, uh, the students would go through in, in, in doing their project. Um, and the projects are in industry and uh, that a team of students spend um, a considerable time uh, learning the processes and actually developing the simulation models and then doing the analysis. And um, they can they can develop as is kind of shown in in the the, the next uh, little group of uh, uh, pictures is they can show uh, they, they can develop some fairly sophisticated models um, as as part of this process and uh, provide some very meaningful analysis to um, to the customers that that, that they're working with um, and then the uh, Another key stakeholder, of course, is FlexSim, since this is built on FlexSim. And uh, we'll start with a, a, actually a quote from Roger that, uh, that when 
uh, Roger and Bill and others started FlexSim, they hoped that FlexSim, the engine, uh, would be used by independent organizations to create niche simulation products and in modules. And that's what log ABS is and fits in with another, uh, a, a number of other ones like, uh, of course, FlexSim Healthcare, uh, HallSim, which is a uh, uh, focused on mining and FlexTerm uh, focused on container ports. And so, of course, uh, some obvious benefits from, from FlexSim is it expands the simulation market. Uh, it, it better meets some of the needs that, um, that, that that maybe they couldn't reach through just a general purpose simulator. And um, it gets simulation into more hands, which is what we all want. And uh, of course, it provides an extra source of revenue and it's ideas for new features um, is, is another good input for uh, a result of, of having this type of high level simulator. Uh, and then finally, the application developer themselves, and, and we mentioned Atris in our logistics at the beginning, but it's certainly a key player in the development of this has been uh, Poznan University of uh, Technology. And um, so they, uh, their benefits is basically uh, they're addressing a, 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 uh, um, a niche market as well. They're, they're um, continued development based on, on user needs, which uh, I've just listed out some here that, that they're in the process now of, of expanding and enhancing uh, log ABS through um, improved cycle management, uh, better visualizations on the cycle structure and, and uh, new charts and so forth. Um, and they also though, uh, provide back to FlexSim needs for other changes in uh, that they would like to see in, in uh, basic FlexSim, such as, as maybe different um, op options on, on how to handle table cells, uh, database management, and so forth. And so again, it gets a nice synergy and a one-to-one -one relationship between uh, the application developer and, and, uh, and FlexSim. So I just want to kind of conclude here with uh, just a summary slide that, that kind of shows uh, <clears throat> that that log ABS really does take a holistic approach. Uh, it starts with the production system at the top. And uh, the main idea is to optimize intra logistics and uh, uh, maybe define logistics train schedules and so forth at the, at the next level down. It does provide with uh, balanced lines or cells. The, uh, uh, we can look at the movement, uh, ergonomic and value added activities within a work cell or workstation. And then the utilization um, and other characteristics like distance traveled of, of key resources. And, uh, and the only thing I've indicated on the left side, and I won't spend time going through that now due to time constraints is these are some of the inputs uh, that, that go into each of those levels. And again, very uh, relevant to the logistics engineer or say students in the logistics program and so forth. Uh, so with that, let me just uh, conclude uh, and thank everyone for their time and the, and the patience with the uh, uh, problems with the, for, for some reason, the, uh, uh, the, the presentation itself with getting us going. But uh, uh, I think we'd be glad to take uh, questions, but I, Marcus, I'll let you yeah. call that. Uh, we may want to do that um, offline. To, uh, we we do have one, one question, so let's take sure. that quickly before the okay. break. So um, okay. this person asked, not sure if I missed it, but how was the model created? Does a person have to create it or is it created by the software from observing the operation? Well, the, 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 uh, uh, I can probably let Pavel handle that a little bit if he wants to make some comments, but basically uh, it's, it's a, you create the, the user creates the model and, uh, but it's at a, at a higher level of creating the model than, um, than you would do in basic Flexin because a lot of the objects and the uh, interface and stuff is customized uh, to facilitate that. Excellent.
Okay, I don't see any other questions. So, oh, I'm sorry, Pavel, did you have a? Pavel yes, so I can say that, that the model is built yeah. uh, according to this method. So it means that we define at the beginning we define plan for every part. So we know uh, which which parts in which containers flow by system. Of course, layout design definition of cycles. So it means that user built cycles using high level high level language, but uh, model is not built from the down to top like in Flexim. So it means that you build from objects, but but is built from top to down. It means that at the first step you define plan for every part. Next you define a production line or cell. You define some workstation. You define some object in workstation. It means uh, you define the number of this object, and then the model is generated automatically. So it means that you can add additionally the position in in x y z, and and model is ready to include cycles and to include the uh, algorithm logic of of calling cycles. So if you if you want to more 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 details, so please write me according to the uh, according to the my emails, yeah, and we are ready to to explain more and show and share the movies and other things. Excellent, thank you, Pavel. And I, and actually, that brings, up a, that brings up a good point. If you if you'd like to put your email in the uh, the lobby once we end this meeting, um, that way. Uh, the people have access to that and, and okay. can reach out to you. Of course.